everyone to Seoul, where T1 is already on match point. That was quick. Yeah. Emily's on track. <laughs> Emily had seen it coming. I don't know what so you guys are doing. Okay, so did it happen? Them getting to match point the way you thought it would. Let me ask that question. Um. Kind of. Pretty much, yeah. I think the only thing is, uh, like I said, I did credit Weibo's game one draft for kind of stopping a lot of the really early aggressive, like level one play that T1 wanted to do. But other than that, yeah, look, look pretty much as expected. I mean, <laughs> Oner and Zeus are yeah. just yeah. forces of nature yeah. right now that cannot be stopped. They cannot. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time on that and then also about the Shy in that top lane and every second counts. And thanks to the reliable Cisco network, the Shy survives the initial gank, but in oh. classic, the Shy fashion ends up falling What is he doing? Why? Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, this was actually really well played by the Shy initially, right? So you end up getting the, the pushback and you're able to use the second or maybe the, yeah second or first yeah. even to get the the knock up to stop the engage initially but then he just doesn't cop hey look Zayus hasn't actually used the hollowed mist so as the shy steps up with the reset on his cue to go for it oh. Zayus immediately is like fantastic <laughs> i can do dodge the initial <laughs> one and then be laughed at by emily yeah. I'm, really bad. Oh I'm really bad at controlling my reaction so if you look that Gwen was a major force to be reckoned with in this team. I actually really liked uh, the way that the Gwen, the Nocturne, and the Silas kind of all combined to be dive buddies with Caria kind of Renata ulting everyone across that. It was pretty great. It was awesome. I think maybe we spent the least time, um, you know, we spent a lot of time on bot and what was going to happen there. Xiao Hu versus Faker as well. But Owner and Zeus, Kobe, they have been lights out so far. It's been so good. I mean, Zeus is getting these counter picks, but he's yeah. really making them worth it. And Owner has just been able to play to their game plan each and every game. Also executing really, really sick plays himself. The Nocturne re-engage where he was at like 25% HP, he goes back in, gets the kill on the dive, and then still survives as well. Massive stuff. Uh, this is just going to be a, a collection of the highlight reel from both of these yeah. players so far. And they feel so well prepared. I mean, Zayas has the Yone for game number one as an answer to the Aatrox, and then you see the band come through for the Yone, and Weber are like, we got them in the corner. And then the Gwen comes out, and they kind of slap them straight back into that corner. So it kind of <laughs> feels like for T1, they've come very well prepared. And Zayas is now benefiting off the fact that he's had a phenomenal series on champions that can do so well into what the show is trying to do. And then yeah. you mentioned it, but the Nocturne ultimate key part of the composition overall, when you have the double melee solo laners looking to close the distance, really makes it happen. Absolutely, and Emily, you've mentioned it before, but we, we cannot overstate how different Owner looked when Faker yes. was not around, how much he had to struggle in that period in summer, and how much he is also looking for redemption for not just last year, but just all those finals that they couldn't get. Yeah, and I think you see it here with the 82% kill participation across the first two games. He's been such an instrumental part at this World Championship, not only of the level ones that we've kind of been been highlighting throughout the tournament, but then also all of their early gameplays and their setup for team fights as well. Uh, if you see it there, the hallway that the players get on stage with, it has all the teams that have won worlds and their mm -hmm. members engraved on the wall. And I think that's such a beautiful shot because as Weibo, you're walking past there thinking, am I Am I ever going to be in this position again? All these heroes have before. And in the same vein, for, for T1, some of their names are already up there. I was going to say, I mean, there's three champions that are up there, but it's one person that you want to focus on. It's Faker, who's having a fantastic series. And coming into this now, you can see that for T1, it has been a bit of a heartbreaking story as one out of the last seven finals they've been able to pick up, Spring 2021 versus Gen G. But this is now the moment where this finally gets to solidify for this roster. If if they can take this next game and push themselves into one of those moments where these become the great teams in the history of League of Legends. Yeah, and I can't get over how perfect that would be as a like end cap to this team, right? Because yeah. we've been talking about like what is missing of this team that has been so dominant over the past few years, but it's been missing that major international title to be able to do it at the tournament where they weren't necessarily coming in as the favorite. They were thought of as a good team, but they weren't coming in as the favorite. They had a very rough summer with Faker's injury. A lot of their players looked out of sync, came back, made it to LCK Finals, lost again, then came it to this tournament, helped dictate the meta on Korean soil. Ah. The last LCK 
LCK team left. It's not oh, Don't break the desk yet. It's too crazy because it has been seven years since Faker has been able to win a world championship. And all of these players on this team have been that heartbreak team that gets so much criticism for choking in finals, and especially Zeus. So I'm most happy for these players to really finally be able to break that and have this full comeback mode. That's why there's so much pressure behind all of these players because this is truly them putting in so much work and, and it's after they have tasted loss and tasted heartbreak that it will taste so sweet yeah. if they can complete it. Faker said this fourth one would be for my teammates and I feel like the teammates have had said the same about him because they're playing out of their minds. The question is, can they finish it right now, right here? Back to our casters. Thank you so much, Shox, and everyone for breaking that one down. It is looking dire for Weibo. That is uh, it's all we can really say here, and we'll see whether they can turn it around, of course. Match point for T1 has been a pain point for them in the past, but it hasn't looked like this, gentlemen. And we'll see if Weibo can find a solution in this final draft. To me, the Aatrox going to be the number one thing I'm looking at, because yes, Zeus is good on it, but I feel like blinding it has not worked out, need to pivot away from that. Uh, but that does open up so many other difficulties, right? Because what else is T1 going to throw you? It doesn't really feel like they've been tested yet in draft in this uh, specific series. Yeah, I think for Weibo, if you have anything left, any secret pick, any different strategy, it's time to just throw it out there and see if it's going to work because they have been dominated by T1 through both the first and second game. They tried that kind of splash into AD Ari, ended up selling the Kirchi Shard. I don't think it really accomplished anything. They've seen some little different looks. We saw that the Senna plus the Glista, that didn't really work for them either. So if there's anything left for Weibo, you got to bring it out now. Is it the Emperor of Shirima though? And it is. It's going to be locked in for Xiaohu. This is his oldest signature pick from even back when I was casting the LPL. He was definitely a lover of this one. And speaking of lovers, the duo themselves going to be locked in here by T1. Favorites of them also. Really big pivot here coming out from T1. I was actually thinking about the Kalista. That to me seemed like a pickup that could come through, but with the Renata gone, doesn't look like they want to prioritize it quite the same way. I would love the Poppy. I think that Poppy Azir specifically is a really strong combo, and it's also one of Weiwei's best champions. We'll see what owner ends up picking up into it, but I do think that Weibo are kind of forced to pick up a bot lane here to prevent getting banned out. Yeah, and they're clearly not sure if they want to go for Poppy here, so they're just buying themselves a little bit more time. They do grab Varus, and will it be a full bot lane to answer, or will he go towards that Poppy? Because I agree, Weiwei, wait, it is his best champion. It's great as an answer to the Rakan. It answers a lot of the meta top laners that we're seeing today as well. But there is that risk of if you don't grab your, your bot laner now, you could get banned out and potentially things to go terrible in the bottom lane. No, you're exactly right. Well, speaking of the bottom lane, a lot of pressure here if the Heimerdinger is going to be locked in, but instead it's the Bard. And this is a big oh. question on a lot of people's minds. It's, is Crisp happy to bring this one out? It's one of the ones that Carrier has looked fantastic on. And now it's going to be Crisp's turn at the champion. See whether it is going to work out here as now the shoe is on the T1 foot. It is an interesting pick, but generally I like Bard as the later pick in the draft. When you have multiple immobile carries, I think it's really strong. But now T1 can just go champions that have dashes, that have the ability to actually avoid this ultimate. And already you have a call. You can dodge it with your R, you can dodge it with your E, you can have the speed up from your W to move out of it. So there's a lot of ways already there. Plus Zaya can ult for ult. That's not the best trade, but this is not like an Ash or Yana type team that Bard I think is going to have an incredible amount of success into. So even if Crisp has a good game, I don't think that really guarantees you anything with the pick from this angle. And I was actually looking towards the Silas, even with no Mauka yet being picked up. We've seen that be a really popular counter pick into the Azir. It is going to be the Akali instead. Obviously does suffer a little bit more in lane, but once you get to the side lane, incredible amount of damage that can come out. And we've seen T1 use any form of side lane pressure really well within the series thus far. Also do note with the Varus already being there, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Weibo tried to do the same thing that T1 have done into a lot of these Zyra Khan lanes, which is go um, very bot focused, right? Because we already have the Varus in the bar. We don't know what the jungler is going to be. And they want to deny the Wukong uh, as a way to reliably get into that back line. And if the Poppy is banned away, which is the champion's most fun to play? It is going to be the Lee Sin. And once again, Owner is going to be on his signature pick. And now, 
with Counterpick going towards either technically, you know, Zayas or Faker, but probably Zayas. Mm -hmm. uh, a difficult choice now for the Shy. Does he run it back Belveth. third time in a row? Belveth going to be locked in here. The Shy thinking about the Electric Rat, and it is going to be the Cannon locked in. Now, what is the answer from Zayas? It could just be something like a Gnar if he wants yeah. to play it a little bit more safe. Um, I do think you want to be pretty careful about what you're playing into a Cannon plus a Belveth. A lot of times we've seen it heavy on the invades, heavy on that top side pressure. Uh, something like a Gnar, you know, would keep you relatively safe, but the Aatrox, th this is a confident pick. I feel like if he's oh, yeah. going Aatrox into the Cannon Belveth, that is, that is some scary stuff, but Zayas has been playing out of his mind this entire series, and we'll have to see if it's going to work for them. But I respect Weibo taking a big pivot here, right? They go towards Comfort with the Azir. They go towards something very different on the top side with the Kennen Belveth. They go towards Bard. They can move around the map. They can set up fights. They can be able to try to potentially, you know, group up around this Belveth, invade Owner heavily, and see if they can find a way into this series. And in the previous games, and in a lot of the games where T1 have looked as dominant as they did, it's all about the lane prior. Do they have have early laning leads. Can they push those to the furthest? When I look at the lanes here, that's not going to be the case. Even if Zeus and Faker play the matchup extremely well, for the first six levels at the very least, barring any major owner or carrier interference, you're not going to have the best of time. Same for bot lane, Ferris Bard, going to be really tough to deal with. So I do think that Weibo have a lot of prio set up and compare that or add the Belv after that might be their opportunity to find their way back into the series. No, I agree. I think pivoting away from these Maokai drafts that we've seen over and over again is going to be a breath of fresh air for this team, and that's precisely what they need with their backs this far against the wall in the World Final. I think more than anything, they need a good start, right? They need a confidence booster. They need something to go right for them early here that they can rally around, that they can build that confidence in and really just try to get into a comfort zone because they have looked nervous. They have looked uncomfortable. T1, from the time they walked out on the stage, looked cool, calm, collected, and it has showed in their play. It absolutely has. And I just want to see some play that is going to show me why Danny had such a huge grin on his face when he was walking back from the coach's booth with the team. And here we are to find out on to the rift for game number three. Match point for T1 as they are up 2-0 in this series. We'll see whether they're going to be ending the world final in this one or whether Weibo Gaming can bring us to at least a game four. And T1 themselves know that just being at match point, not going to be enough. And you can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming, grab the exclusive Braum W emote. Uh, we might not be able to say this again. So just make sure. Do it now. You do it now. You gotta yeah. be quick. Yeah. Well, you don't, but you know, you, you do gotta do it. Yeah, you should do it. I mean, you can also do it Minions post finals, right? Right, but as long as you do it, that's the- uh, that's, that's the important part. Yeah. You need that emote. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that we saw last year with the run that DRX was able to make that just being in a rough position, looking like you're down and out, that in of itself doesn't mean that the series is lost. And I think we see it both in T1, how much more, uh, as you were saying, calm and collected, not just when they came out, but particularly when you see them. And this also goes back to the series against JDG, where even when they got the early wins, it, it, there was no apparent joy, right, that you'd expect, because they know just because you're up 2-0 doesn't mean that if Weibo doesn't get this game, gets a good angle in draft, can bring it back. And look at this start here from T1. It was Owner starting over on the Raptors, and he actually got leashed on Raptors by Zayas because they were so nervous about that potential invade that Belveth teams have been doing so often. Also worth noting that Crisp, level 1, ran straight top and gave a lane war to the Shy, which is going to deny the ability for Zayas to poke in and out of that brush, drop aggro, you know, be able to hide and use that. So really emphasizing that play towards the top side. And we'll see where Weiwei does want to go because he is just power farming on his bot side for now. So we'll be clearing up towards top, but no sort of a move towards an invade. Yep, gonna be able to finish off his red buff. We'll then get things sorted as Faker here on his fifth unique champion of the tournament. As we have a look at all of the lanes so far, Weibo actually with great position as far as tempo and control is concerned. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about. This should be heavily in favor of Weibo. We do see Faker is able to put in a little bit of pressure. I think that's partially because they are not 100% sure where Owner is. I don't think he was tracked early on, but both for the Shy and for Crisp and Light, 
been able to find the early leads. Now the question is, can they maybe set up, say, a double scuttle or get an early back? The Shy also did go for call, so is looking to try and play as aggressively as possible while naturally being able to get ahead just by the virtue of cashing out. Yep, Light getting some Belveth wards in there as well, just to give Weiwei the opportunity to get towards the enemy jungle. Right now, he is just finishing off his top side. He's going to be able to get that one through, and then it is Rift Scuttlers that we're looking at as T1. Moving a little bit further forward is Carrier, but not going to be punished too hard. Just use, loses 50% of his health bar. And we are just going to see Weiwei on this ward for T1. So Vision given over some information there. T1 do gather in this early stage. And it could mean Owner goes top because now you know that the jungler can't be there to answer. So there is a potential angle to look for him. And he did just use his lightning rush, so I think he's in trouble. Yeah, there's the flash Q3 from Zayas. The Shy is in trouble. The lightning rush is on cooldown. He gets slowed down by the cripple and the Q is going to land. Owner secures it and that is first blood for T1. It's perfect timing from T1 and it's all because of the Raptors ward. It was a clear top to bot from Weiwei, but he wrapped down to try to go towards that bot side scuttle. As soon as they saw him on that ward, they knew they could go for it on top side. Zayas, no hesitation, starts it off with a flash in. But without that E from Kennen, there's just no way you're going to get out of that long lane. And... We will see if Weiwei is able to maybe make a play towards bot side as owner making his way over to mid. Yeah, it's going to safeguard forward there. It's Faker dashes in and Xiaohu will survive. Faker just barely managing to walk away oh. as now they come in. Oh, the grand entrance. Phenomenal from Kerry. We'll see whether he can survive though. Oh! The piercing arrow will do it. And Weibo Gaming even out the scoreline. Light knocks him down. That was a big kill for them on the bot side. They need something to rally around and perhaps it is Light in this potentially final game. Tell you what, that was a pretty cool looking grand entrance though. And I, I gotta say, Weiwo again, to me, he is the guy that makes it happen. I think he's been the player that has really impressed me the most here on Weibo. He keeps trying to make these plays and it's been kind of the saving grace for Weibo in the early game with how much they've been pressured. And you have to say, it's really concerning to see the Shy die top lane once again here with how Zayas has been playing. If you cannot keep this guy down, he is just on fire. But it is Zayas with no flash and it is crisp up on top side. But missing his ignite, I don't know that he can really go into this wave and try to fight him. You can see Zayas is going to get some vision down uh, on top of the ward that uh, Weibo already have. And they know that this is where they need to defend, right? You can see the Shy with a couple of wards already invested here towards this top side. Now underneath this turret, Zayas finding these little cues. Magical Journey, definitely a possibility, and Weiwei wants to take it with Crisp here. Let's see whether they can get an angle. Three versus one, he does try and get out. There's the World Ender. He's trying to avoid all of this CC, and it's not going to work. There's the kill for Weiwei. Really good com uh, communication there for Weibo. They know that Zayas wants to try and get the wave in, so the Shy is setting himself up as Juicy Bait, and Zayas takes it. But the question is, how much do you lose bot side? Because we talked about Light as the hope in this game. Light now is going to be fully zoned off the wave. They lose the, the Dragon as well, because there was so much time spent topside. They're going to lose at least one plate bot, maybe two, and likely most of, if not all of this wave, because he's totally zoned off until Chris arrives. So, yes, they do get a kill on top side, but T1 are taking a lot down here on bot as well. And it's not going to be a Cloud Soul this time around, gentlemen. It is going to be Cloud Drake coming up second. So we will get a different Soul. We'll see what that is going to be a little bit later on. Zayas comes back up towards this top side, about 20 CS down. So the top lane that Weibo have been focusing on is kind of working out. But like you're talking about, so much is going to hinge around Light. Does still have a CS advantage. That bottom side certainly is somewhere that T1 can play through. And this is also where the early kill in Light, I think, makes a really big difference because the fact that he was able to get that kill means that even with him having to give up some of his laning lead and uh, Gumiyushi picking up a plate, still going to be in a great position. Guman Karia, though, now taking control as we do have Weiwei here again. Yeah, control ward has come in, of course, Crisp. He can make these tunnels. And so they are a little bit closer than you might otherwise expect, but no, not going to pull the trigger on anything, understanding that T1 have full information of what's going on. Exactly. They knew they'd been spotted. They're not sure where Owner is on the map right now, so it would be a risky play if Owner is shadowing them. He is level 6, so Weiwei just going to keep his farm up as much as he possibly can and re-clear that bot side jungle. But Faker, time and time again, has just been pushing out, moving into the enemy jungle, getting a ward down, and now pulls the wave to push towards him. So that entire wave is going to be denied from Xiaohu as it comes in towards Faker. And that's going to even out a lot of the CS in that mid lane. We can also see that Ona is in that area as well. So setting up for a potential gank, you can see Crisp going to come up 
Try and make sure that this mid lane is going to be sorted out. And with this wave pretty prepped, this is going to be a very satisfying queue. Oh, Faker doesn't even let us see it. He just wants to deny even more CS if he can. And now Zayas cheating down. They're trying to get vision on where Weiwei Wei is. And, and they know he's not going to be in the top side jungle. Owner is there. Zayas is there. Carry is there as well. So they can now move up and potentially start up this Rift Herald because they do have Pryo. And Zayas now back towards his top side with Owner in tow, wanting to get a little bit of revenge. And even though First Blood came in, the try still has a CS advantage. Lightning Rush to get him out of there as Owner just mini stun kick into the wall. That is going to be the execution, but the ultimate is going to be there from the Shine. After the flash, he will survive, and now it's Weiwei's turn. Can he actually get this one as Owner? About 50%. The safeguard to try and get out the flash oh. for the knockoff. It's still there, and Crisp comes in for the kill. They get some knockoffs. Zayas will survive, but not the least. And meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, the Blade Caller not quite there for Gumiyushi. Picture in picture, as you can see, and Faker looking for a little bit more. He connects the backflip, or the shuriken of the backflip, and uh, isn't going to be able to find too much more. So, Weibo should be able to get themselves this Rift Herald. Really important moment here, because with Belve, if you want to get those early Heralds, it's the Shy actually turning it around this time, staying alive for long enough for reinforcements to come in. Owner and Zayas don't actually get to 100 to 0, and that is the Herald going over to oh. Weiwei. Yeah, Light just staying oh. his ground. And when you do have the lethal tempo, uh, Varus, have to be a little bit scared if you are Gumiushi. So he's going to be going back, but still just a trade of ghosts in the end. Very close stuff. I mean, both of them had committed their alts in that previous exchange where Guma was chasing him down in that bot lane. But this is Weibo on the brink of despair here in a match point game, being able to stay alive. Nice sidestep on oh, that Q man. from the Shy was so clean as he flashes out, but not so far to let them out of that ultimate. Weiwei goes in, everyone is piling up here, but it's Crisp who arrives first. And it's the failed flash from Owner, right? Just on the edge, sets it up easily for Crisp. Even if he does hit that, I don't know if he gets out because he still has to walk past the wall. Crisp might have been able to clip in with how well he has been playing in this game. And a really big win for Weibo because they're already ahead in gold, but the fact that they will be able to utilize this Herald for a really big gain in the side lane with the pressure that it gives the Belva, gonna be a really big win. You can see the Stride Breaker complete now for Weiwei as well. Having that Mythic really powerful on this champion. You queue up on top of them, you slow them down. That sets up your W very, very nicely. And you can usually get a full E channel with that. So we'll see if Weiwei can stay aggressive and if they can keep the Shy in this power position that he is created slightly for himself, you know, not obviously at a massive advantage, and Zayas doing as Zayas always does, building lethality. Yeah, he uh, does very much like to have a bit of burst on this Aatrox, but I like that Weibo have just stuck to their game plan, right? They're playing around topside, they're getting the Shy, like you say, into these positions, and even though Zayas isn't necessarily ridiculously far behind, as you can see in the CS, it's pretty close, but still, the Shy will have these very impactful ultimates, and Weiwei is the benefactor here, sitting at 1-0 and 2. Able to get some control on this Belveth, and we know she can be devastating if she gets ahead. And it's just been kind of this return to more what Weibo showed us in the LPL, this play towards topside, this focus on the Shy. It hasn't been about going towards Light and Crisp, and potentially that is because Guma and Karia are so hard to attack in a lot of these situations. Cool, Q going to connect there. Nice little knockup as Karia tries to find it. There's the quickness onto two. The kick gets the knockup onto Xiaohu. The Empress of Light only gets Ona, but that will get him out. But Weiwei's not going to be so lucky. The Shy got in here, and now he might be in trouble. He breaks the chains, but is he still going to be able to get out? Kumiyushi decides he wants to fight Light towards the bottom side. That was the right call. Zayas grabs the double kill, and Weibo lose out on the fight. And while the laning setup is there this time around for Weibo, their early game looking a lot better. The skirmishes, they're still not able to make work, although teleport coming in. Yeah, teleport from this top side of the river. Xiaohu coming in, looking for the opportunity, doesn't have the ultimate. They secure the Drake, does T1. Grand entrance, not going to find the target there. On to Crisp as the Tempered Fake comes in. Faker trying to play Bouncer to keep his team alive. And the ultimate doesn't really work out here from Crisp. Still, they don't lose too much, even though Xiaohu is on the other side of the map. And they're buying time for the fact that there is just a guy on the top side of the map taking plates. Yeah, they can't get anything. It's a great ulti from Chris, but no one is there to follow it up. And as you say, Chronicler, again, it's T1 out skirmishing Weibo, who were in that power position coming into this fight, it felt like. But T1 just preempt the play. They press the go button. They find that engage, and they push Weibo out of there. And it's Carrion Owner grouping up and starting this off. 
And initially you see Wavell uh, wanting to try and look for something here, but Carrier with his charm buys so much time, and then the moment that Faker hits that E on oh, Weiwei, his fate is sealed, flashes over the wall just to die to Zayz, actually giving him the reset. And then this is the point where already as Weibo, you have this incredibly strong like level six comp with the Shy, with your ultimate, and they just don't get to use it. Yeah, and that's just T1 really understanding their position in this game. They find the opportunity, they force the engage. That's one of the really powerful things you can do against comps like cannon comps, where you just get on this guy, you put him under pressure, you force him to use his ultimate in a situation that he doesn't want, just almost defensively, as they were able to there. And it just means that Weibo now losing that second dragon. This one's going to be an Ocean Soul available, which would be pretty devastating, I think, for their chances. It would mean that the Shy is not going to be able to play through sides at all. Yeah, exactly. And on the other side, if there was some control here for Weibo, then they can utilize this Varus poke very expertly, right? You can play in that neutral effectively. If you can get themselves some of these dragons, four of them would seem pretty good, but it also feels a little bit like a pipe dream at this stage. You have a look at the gold though, 300 still in advantage of Weibo. No first turret to go down just yet as the plates fall. Not too many of them going over, but we're having a look at the amount of drakes that have been stacked. And the fact that T1, once again, have a bit of control on this map, I think, is the problem. They have been dominating the objective game all day, it has felt like. Weibo rarely able to really you know, get a foot in, it feels like, at these critical objective fights. The setups from T1 have been better. They have been more prepared when these fights are going to break out. And you can see in the MasterCard lane economy snapshot, once again, Zayas now is ahead. And that is going to be so tough for the Shy because you really are dependent upon these early game leads that you build up as a cannon to be able to play through sides later on. And Zayas also has been, not historically, right, has actually had an issue with that, but domestically, outside of finals, been so consistent in even when he is behind, generating value. I remember a Jace game where he went like 0 and 3 early on. Yep. He was still able to output insane amounts of damage. And now he is playing the Lethality Aatrox yet again. The only one who consistently has a success with this specific build. Oh, carry on. going to get out of the way. For Weibo, this Herald to me is kind of a must win. You need to get that, need to break open the map. We'll see if they're able to get it done. And Weibo are going to have to count on their carries. Xiaohu, Light, in a good spot here. You know, Xiaohu has been able to make it happen at many international tournaments. Three MSI titles for this guy, but Worlds thus far has not been as much about him as it has the others. And maybe this is the time now that he can step up on this Azir, on this comfort pick. Maybe can make that big play that can claw this series back for Weibo because T1 are coming and they're looking for a fight. Yep, they're seeing what they can do here as Faker moving into Fog of War. Potential teleport angle here as Light. I don't think you're going to be able to He's get through off. that way, but still, Weibo with the Shy on the flank angle. He has Flash available, and now the teleport comes in behind them. Faker wanting to find his angle in. They don't get the knockup. A little bit of mistiming there from Weiwei, as the Rift Herald is going to reset. She heads back into the pit, and Weibo going to have to start over. But still, Light could never actually move from mid lane over, because these wards are actually covering his move through the river. He can't actually get over there. He would get engaged on by Caria. He knew it. He read the play. But Weibo can't commit to the Herald without their AD carry being able to join. At this uh, very least, though, Weibo do force Faker his TP. Doesn't get to just push to his heart's content towards that bot side of the map. See if they want to continue trying to contest there, because it looks like T1 not really that interested in the Herald themselves, uh, but very interested in ensuring that Weibo don't pick it up and looking for a fight angle if they do try to commit to it. You can understand it. Of course, Belveth does quite like uh, securing those Heralds. Crown now complete. Xiaohu moving towards his Nash's Tooth. Not necessarily the most damage, but will have a lot of consistent impact in a lot of these fights as well. And avoiding getting burst down certainly going to be very, very strong. As Faker picks up this top wave closer to Herald, does make a lot of sense. And we've got one second on this Dragon, which is where T1 are going to put their attention. Crisp gets over the wall with a tiny little magical journey. It's going to work out, though. Yeah, they are going to be able to have inside track on this Dragon. Faker was up on the top side, has no TP, so he has to run down. And Shahu has pushed in bot. The Shy will answer topside, but they don't really have any deep wards for him to TP to, so if he does join, it will be very much so on Weibo's side of the fight. Now yeah, Faker just going to backflip away from the knockup from Weiwei. So Weibo not going to find too much there. There's Ona in the river. Zayas just clearing out this Gromp, wanting to get some control back in. Looks like T1 
Happy to start off this Drake, although it's not behaving itself all that much. Carrier with all of his buttons up and available. The engage potential is going to be there. Control Ward just eviscerated here. As T1 trying to do the same thing. Teleport now to come forward. Azeus on that flank angle. The Shy now here. And Gumiushi pretty safe now on that back line. Look at Carrier though. It's so hard for Weibo to walk up because Carrier is on that sideline. They know he's there. Yeah, he flashes in. He finds himself. The charm on the four is there. It is the ultimate from the Shy, but it just doesn't quite do enough. They try and get out, but Fika has a perfect execution and locks down his fellow ninja. Xiaohu now taking a whole lot of damage in Faker. He's in the shroud. He's toying with him. It's a double cost. What? Order! And back in again. It's a triple for Faker. Zayas is going to be out of block down the next one. Faker eventually goes down, but it's four for him and Carrier. And that is T1 turning the situation around. Their health bars are low. Not all of Weibo's cooldowns actually hit the mark, but it doesn't matter. They're still looking pretty good. If only they could take down Faker. But they don't, the reinforcements come in, and T1 set up soul points. They just can't. Life fishes with the Q, won't get it. It's T1, one game from the World Championship. It's T1, one dragon from Soul. And Carrier gets spotted. He says, great, I'm going to engage. Both your soul leaders are stacked up. Carrier goes right in, knocks them both up. The Bard ulti comes through there. I think it was meant to protect the Shy and Xiaohu, but it kind of backfired as it immuned the ulti coming through from the Shy. And from Xiaohu, that was two ultimates that just yeah. didn't find their mark. The anti-synergy, really rough for Weibo here. We have their backs against the wall. They just don't find the angle, and that is Soul Point set up. A triple kill for Faker on Akali, a champion that, well, of course, we knew he could play, but we hadn't seen this year just yet. I tell you what, it's pretty poignant seeing him play Silas and Akali in this series, though, after what happened last year. Just showing that it doesn't really matter what the meta's like. Fake is there. There is always going to be an opportunity. Just kind of cute after what had happened. I mean, the man is the meta. This guy has been yeah. around forever. And it is so impressive to see how well he is playing. Because I don't think you could make the argument that he has been the best performing mid leader individually since 2017. This year, you can make that argument. He has been tearing it up. He's been great in lane, has really been impressive in team fights, and it just feels like a rejuvenated Ooh. faker. And he goes again, as now Ona looking for that opportunity as well. Backflip connects also as the perfect execution comes forward. Has he overstepped the answer? Is no, because he had the stopwatch anyway, and now the cavalry comes in. Chris, the next to go down, Weiwei. Wei. He's under a turret. Oh. He flashes on top. The lethal Aatrox gonna get it done, and T1, they feel like it's Baron time. It's the king at home. Respect the name. Faker, the greatest of all time. Styling on him in Seoul. And Light desperately trying to get something going here. Not gonna be the case. He's not gonna be allowed to because Faker wants to keep his whole oh. house alive as well, but it's not gonna work out. He goes into the shroud. I don't know whether this is necessarily what you the fight that you want to take, but Chow is going to turn up. Faker is going to get out. The Baron secured here for T1 on all five members as we tick just past 21 minutes. And as, as we take another look here, you see how ready T1 is, right? Everyone already on their way. And this cannon, not in the greatest of spots, uses his ultimate only on Faker, stays alive with the stopwatch, and then that ultimate from Chris doesn't hit the mark. And how clean is that from Owner? I think it was a drive-by smite kill as he had queued Weiwei, going past the cannon, smites him down out of the air. Everyone from T1, they are feeling it. They know they are potentially one, two fights away from claiming this elusive title that this team that now is the roster with the most international games played together all time of any yeah. roster in history has not been able to claim that title. They are getting so damn close to it. Incredibly. It's just over 4,000 gold to lead. They have Soul Point available as well. And Carrier showing absolute mastery on this uh, Rakan as well. This is something that he has been extraordinarily feared on. And this was, in fact, when we were touting Gumiushi and Carrier as the greatest bottom lane in the world, it was when they were playing champions like this. It's when they were flexing the meta so incredibly much. But Carrier's engages always absolutely fantastic. We'll see whether he can utilize those alongside this extraordinary play that we've already seen from Zayas and Owner in the previous games, and especially Faker here in this one. And this is the moment, I think, for Xiao in particular. You need to find a hero play. You need to get multiple people. And it's really hard because 
as we see, the Baron Powerplay 41, uh, upwards of 2k gold. They're setting up for an Ocean Soul in about a minute. And everyone on T1 has so much mobility, but if they don't find a play like that and the game plays out the way it has, there is just no way. You need to get a Xiaohu, the Shy Wombo combo, possibly set up by Crisp, and give Light an opportunity to pop off, because otherwise T1's gonna get Soul, they're gonna get the next Baron, and they're gonna win the series in Karia. Gonna get knocked up here as Ona comes on over. He's here to protect his support. The quickness ties them all up, and Xiaohu going to be the next target. He finds two with the Empress Divide, but Crisp just evaporates. Wei Wei going to suffer the same fate as Deus is on the warpath. Light able to sidestep, finds the Chains of Corruption, but there's not enough damage. Xiaohu decent flash to try and get himself out, but he's not out of the woods yet as Faker tidies up that kill, and they are just so far ahead. Oda secures Light with a sonic wave, and the Shy finds himself alone heading back towards his base. That's the double kill. That's the clean ace for T1. And T1! Weibo try, they know they have to contest this dragon, they have to contest the soul, but they're not even given the opportunity, they thought they got Carrier, but Carrier says, come get me. And it looks to me like they're going to take this inhibitor and move back, it may not be the end of the series, but it might be the last moment that Weibo felt hope in it. As Crisp clearing out some control vision, Ona wants to grab himself a soul to finish this game off on. And T1 are just on fire. All five players in this final game here potentially playing out of their minds. They are five brains, one player. It's like everything is perfectly coordinated. They think they've caught Karia, but everyone from T1 piles in lightning fast. Owner is here. Zeus pops the ulti fast for the move speed from the top side. Faker coming in from the bottom. T1 collapses from every angle, and Weibo are wiped from the map. And there's nothing to do, right? The moment that they're not able to 100 to 0 anyone on T1, as soon as reinforcements arrive, you're gonna get blown up, and the gold leads as Light desperately tries to at least get Zeus. Oh. Won't even get that. It's heartbreaking as now they take a magical journey over Zeus. He likes this one though. One versus three. He's absorbing so much. The Empress Divide. It comes in, but he's still alive. What? It's going on. Faker tidies up the first. Everyone's just exploding. As Wei Wei trying to get something done, but it does not matter. T1 are too strong. Four times T1 has lost in a game five. Four times they've been knocked out and four times they have got back up for this moment it was seven years since their last a decade since their first the skt legacy has been reignited t1 will be your 2023 world champions It took them two years to win a title again. Spring 2021, this roster came up. They stomped the LCK. They stomped the playoffs. And then at MSI, we started to see the cracks. And then last year at Worlds, it felt like they'd been able to recuperate from all that. But it wasn't the case. It took them one more year to take the lessons that they'd learned in 2022. And so many had doubts after what had happened in the summer split. But you can see that joy on this team. And you can see the devastation on the side of Weibo as they look on. T1, they must feel like this is a long time coming. They had to work so incredibly hard to get here to this stage. And how much sweeter that victory has to be after time and time and time again. This T1 roster tasted the bitter defeat. They were the ones on the receiving end of these losses. Uh -oh. It started to feel like they might never be able to do it. You can see as we head towards the trophy ceremony presented by Mercedes-Benz. Oh. The Summoner's Cup, beautiful, crafted by Tiffany and Co. T1 finally hoisting it with the new name. SKT was their name when they had the first three, and now this team that so many adore will finally hoist the Summoner's Cup.
And they've waited for it. Last year, the story wasn't about them. But this year it is. All the pent up emotion for this team, all the disappointment, it's led to this. And what an incredible run. With four LPL teams remaining, T1 were the last team from any other region, let alone the LCK. They took down BLG 2-0. They swept LNG. They crumbled JDG's Golden Road. And now, here in the finals, another sweep, absolute domination against Weibo. There is no doubt who the greatest team in the world today is. And you can see Faker especially looking on while his teammates are raising the cup as well. He's done it three times. This is the first time. And he'll hoist it for the fourth. I can't believe it. The GOAT has bookended his first decade with three zeros over the LPL. But let's recap this incredible world's run by a world champion, T1. T1 are defending the honor of the LTK. They had a very shaky summer, nine and nine. But it is still T1. It is still the number two seed from the LCK. But here is Summit just by himself, finds himself. It's in the Magnus, no one is three. It's gigantic, and Summit's going all out. They just roll over the top of TL. T1 are going to take the first game of Swiss. Take one, stop. Take one, stop. This is the team that T1 fans wanted. Baker predicts Ruler's flash. He gets there first. He catches him with the ultimate. It is a clean ace. Mercedes Benz Trophy Ceremony is League of Legends Esports Global Chungwar. Nazareth Alehata Chungwar, Riot Games Dylan Jadeja CEO, Riot Games John Nidam, Esports President, and I will be with you. Please welcome the crowd. Thank you so much, Heiji. T1, congratulations, our 2023 League of Legends World Champions. Your journey has been exceptional. Your legacy is forever cemented, and you have given the world peak League of Legends. We are so honored to present you with the Summoner's Cup and the 2023 Championship Rings. On behalf of League of Legends and Riot Games, congratulations. I also would like to take a moment to thank the cities of Seoul and Busan for sharing their home with us this last month. Korea is the birthplace of esports, and you have delivered an unforgettable world. 
Kansamnida. Please join us in congratulating your champions, T1. Thank you. <웃음> 네, 이 영광의 순간입니다. 자, 여러분, 월즈 2023 챔피언 T1을 다시 한번 큰 박수로 맞아주시기 바랍니다. 네, 오늘 정말 흥미진진하고 압도적이었던 대결이 펼쳐졌던 결승전의 영광의 우승자는 바로 T1이었습니다. 이 T1 선수들과 인터뷰 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. 자, 그렇다면 먼저 제우스 선수와 인터뷰 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. Top winner, Zeus. 네, 제우스 선수. Zeus. 역시 this is the national team top laner. You were performing out of your mind today. How do you feel right now? We had a lot of ups and downs. We had so many hardships starting from last year. But I think this moment at Worlds repays everything. I thought I would be crying, but I'm not actually in tears. 예상할 수 있어서 그렇지 않았을까 조심스레 짐작을 해봅니다. 오늘 더 샤이를 함께 했습니다. Your lane opponent was the shy. How was it? I was quite nervous. You know, I was pretty much worried as well. But the moment I started playing in front of so many fans here, I was not able to feel nervous. I was actually very confident, so I was able to pull off a decent performance. Thank you so much. Zeus, you won the gold medal at the Asian Games, and now you're you're a world champion. What is your plan or goal as a League of Legends professional player? I mean, I can say I achieved a lot of achievements this year, but at the same time, all the other players will step it up starting next year, so I want to say I want to enjoy the moment of being the best top winner until the end of this year, and I will keep grinding. Once again, congratulations. Now let's hear from T1's jungle owner. Finally, you managed to win your first world's title. How do you feel? Over the course of three years, you know, it was not easy. You know, I was going through a lot of ups and downs, but in the end, I was able to lift up the trophy. It feels amazing. I really, really wanted to win worlds with the five players on T1's roster, and in the end, we made it. I don't know how things will turn out next year, but it just means a lot that we managed to win the world's trophy in the end, all together as a team. A great accomplishment by Zeus owner Faker, Kumayoshi, and Kyria in the end. Owner, starting from quarterfinals, you guys were the last hope of the LCK. Did you feel extra burden? Not really, you know, it was happening in the in Korea and also all the other teams are really strong and talented anyway, so I was not worried about our opponents. I just tried my best to enjoy every moment and because of that, we were able to get such a great outcome today. Owner, how would you like to describe how you feel right now? Your interviews left so many great quotes. I mentioned this multiple times in previous interviews. You know, today we were able to finally bloom the prettiest, the most beautiful flower. After multiple setbacks and hardships, T1 finally bloomed at the best moment possible. Now let's hear from the midliner of T1, the faker, the unkillable Demon King. 
Baker, you wrote another history. Four times champion. How do you feel? Feels great. Plus, I'm just happy that I got to play in front of such a big audience. You know, who we are playing up against doesn't matter. I'm always really grateful that I can perform on stage. Baker, earlier today in the matchup teaser, you mentioned that the fourth Royals title will be for my team. What does that exactly mean? Well, just like I said just now, I'm just happy that the people are happy by watching me perform, and I hope my teammates are also happy by playing together with me. So I wanted to just share joy and happiness with all the people around me. Then, Faker, would you like to say anything to your teammates? Great job, everyone. I know you guys worked so hard for this moment. Thank you so much. Baker, you have proven yourself as a living legend by popping off in every game possible. And you said you keep wanna, you know, going on as a professional player. What is your plan as a professional player now that you achieved everything? You know, still, I learned so much from this matchup as well. So I just want to become a better and greater player. Lastly, anything you want to say to the fans? It's been so long since I lost one world, so it feels surreal right now. But I just want to say thank you to all the fans out there, and I will keep working hard for my fans. Thank you very much, Faker, and congratulations one more time. And now here, let's hear from Guma Yusi. You finally made it. You are the world champion. How do you feel? Oh, <laughs> feels good. Yeah, and amazing. I think it all came down to the bot lane matchup. How did you prepare the draft and comp today? Before I uh, answer to that question, can I add on to my first answer? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. How do you feel right now? Thank you, my dear Lord. And also, I want to say thank you to all the coaching staff, our GM, our COO, our manager, they worked so hard for us. I really appreciate their hard work. I don't think I was performing really well today, but my teammates, they're doing a great job, so we won the finals. It feels like a dream. I want to say thank you to everyone on the side of T1, especially Keria. And today, what was the key to the bot lane composition you, with you and Keria? I think we kind of um, showed everything we can do throughout our competition at World. So we knew uh, what we're going to do and also what potentially the opponents are going to do. So we were going through a lot of potential matches. And we were like, let's take this and let's kind of like deal with this picks if they take it. And you also mentioned that by seeing all the LCK and T1 fans doing good stuff to make you know T1 win worlds, you were also happy and could tell how desperate your fans are. Anything you want to say to them? So it was not easy. I, I know you, we ended up being a runner-up for like five, six times. Sometimes we even ended up on third place. I know our fans were really thirsty and desperate for this moment, but I want to say thank you so much for your continuous support. Now, let's hear from Keria, the support player on the side of T1. Congratulations on winning World Championship. Keria, 
You finally met new jeans. And you finally won worlds. How do you feel? I'm happy that I got to see new jeans. I'm happy that I won worlds. Right now, it feels unreal. I feel like I'm over the clouds. You know, I feel like I'm dreaming. I just keep thinking about all the process that we were working hard for this moment. You know, I'm really happy, but also I'm just feeling nostalgic about you know the three years that we spent together for this moment. Korea. What do you think went well today, or maybe what was the favorite moment of Worlds this year? I think our preparations were really on point in quarters and semifinals, and because of that, we made it to the finals. Today, gameplay-wise, I'm not really happy, but my teammates were popping off. I can hear the crowds are saying no. I really appreciate that. All the players, all the coaching staff were working hard in order to achieve this moment. So I am really happy and grateful. Keria, what is your plan heading into next year now that you're a world champion? All my teammates were, you know, speaking some fancy words, so I'm going to follow them. I'm just going to, you know, enjoy this moment for about a couple of days. And now, and then I'm going to get back to the grind, you know. I always have to keep working hard, so I wish I can keep on showcasing the best performance and best result possible to my fans. Now let's hear from Tom. The interim head coach for T1. How do you feel winning Worlds as an interim head coach the first year leading T1? You know, this year was not easy, but in the end, it's a happy ending. So, right now it feels just surreal and amazing. I can tell, you know. You and your coaching set were working so hard because the drafting was the key point with you and Weibo. What did you focus on the most? We were, yeah, Weibo also had Danny. So we wanted to make sure that we can kind of be more thoroughly prepared for the matchup and compositions and draftings. Moving on to Roach, coach on the side of T1. Congratulations, Roach. How do you feel at the moment? When I was performing as a professional player or when I just joined T1 as a coach, I really wanted to, you know, be standing here once in a lifetime and I finally made it. You know, we only have seven people standing on stage at the moment, but not only us, but also Sky, our manager, our GM, all the staff on the side of T1 worked so hard and supported us and also our fans. Because of their support and love, we were able to make it happen. Is there anything you want to say to the T1 fans? I think we were able to end the year on a very good note. It's a big relief. But we will keep, you know, going on. We will keep challenging for another title. So I will look forward to your continuous support. Thank you very much, everyone. I know all five players and also the coaching staff were doing a fantastic job winning Worlds today, but let's find out who is going to be the finals MVP, the OPPO finals MVP today. This is time to reveal the OPPO Finals MVP of Royals 2023. It's going to be Zeus on the top lane. Congratulations.
여기까지 이렇게 월드 우승에 이어서 Congratulations, Zeus. 나눠보겠습니다. Zeus 선수 Zeus. 월드 2023 우승에 이어서 오늘 MVP까지 You won MVP 월드 and you won the finals MVP. Uh, Were you expecting this? Last year, my opponent laner won finals MVP and I was watching him winning the finals MVP in the backstage. It was another year of me ending up being a, being a runner-up. I was like, well, this happened again, but I was like, maybe if I just keep working hard, there will be my moment. And somehow, I was able to make it happen in the end. I want to say thank you to my friends and family and also Khan, who helped me so much during Asian Games. And also, of course, T1 and my players. And also, Bengi, who used to be the head coach of T1. And also, Zeus, would you like to say anything to the fans? Yeah. I played so many leagues this year. It was really hard. But thanks to your support, I was able to keep myself motivated. I will make sure to always show the best performance possible for my fans. Once again, this is your 2023 Worlds Opal Finals MVP, Zeus. 자 이렇게 해서 월드 우승 V4라는 대기록을 세우면서 다시 한번 세계 최고임을 입증한 T1입니다. 승리 다시 한번 진심으로 축하드립니다. 이곡에서 리그 오브 레전드 챔피언십. 한 달이 넘는 긴 여정 동안 정말 많은 일들이 있었습니다. 전 세계 모든 팀들과 그리고 스태프분들, 선수의 친구들과 가족분들 정말 많은 응원과 애정을 보내주셨는데요. 또 개최에 힘써주신 서울시와 부산시 덕분에 이 자리가 더욱더 빛날 수 있었습니다. 이번 월즈에 보내주신 전 세계 팬 여러분들의 응원과 열정 그리고 리그 오브 레전드를 향한 변함없는 애정 역시도 진심으로 감사하다는 말씀 드리고 싶습니다. 자 이제 2023 리그 오브 레전드 월드 챔피언 T1팀의 트로피 세레머니와 함께 여기서 인사드리겠습니다. 그럼 선수분들 트로피 앞쪽으로 이동을 해주시고요. 수완사의 컵을 들어 올려주시기 바랍니다. 2023 리그 오브 레전드 월드 챔피언 T1입니다. 큰 박수 부탁드립니다. 2022spring. When they were just absolutely dominating in LCK, um, and having them, watching them for so long, kind of go to these international finals, fall just short. Especially after, again, this split, I cannot stress enough how much criticism players like Owner and Zayus were getting from the community, um, and how honestly, like poorly, they looked for a lot of their <laughs> condition throughout summer. Money shot. <laughs> when Faker was out with an injury, Let's it's go. just. It's so amazing to, and cathartic to see this moment for this team. That's what makes it so much sweeter, that they did drop and have to pick themselves back up again. We called it the grind, the glory for this year, <laughs> and I think uh, they've deserved it. We saw Faker there, of course, with the trophy, and just, you know, 10 years ago, he did it for the first time. The trophy isn't getting any lighter, but the crown <laughs> isn't getting any lighter either. 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely insane to see from Faker. And the fact that as well, they get to do it in such a dominant fashion. I'm they matched two of the most dominant runs we've ever seen in the World Playoffs. Samsung Galaxy in 2017 and SKT from 2015, matching their own run right the way back many, many years ago. It's such an impressive feat to see what T1 have become at the World Championship. And they only dropped a single game to the LPL. All four seeds beat every single one of them. Only one game dropped. Absolute perfection. It's fantastic. Um, and to do it right here in Korea, um, we didn't really mention it that much, but you know, South Korea is one of the reasons why esports is what it is. As we see Guma, who has a whole family of people that are great at gaming and a StarCraft legend also. Um, in general, it's just such a, a beautiful moment. And I, I almost think, was it was it all for this? You know, the two years of the heartbreaks for the T1 fans, for the organization, for the players themselves, even on the biggest stage. But this is what you get in return for all your hard work. And it's the fact that every single one of them stepped up at different times over the course of this playoffs. Obviously, we were talking a heap about Gumi Yushi and Kerry in that bottom side. But I mean, the fact you saw Zaya step up here today to clinch that World Finals MVP, when you look towards how good Owner was in the jungle, not only here, but over the course of playoffs as well. And obviously, you could talk at length about Faker. But every single person on this team had their moment and had to do it to get here. Yeah, and I think the, the other thing that I still want to stress about this team is like the fact that they came in you were looking at how they were going to play you were looking at JDG a lot of people were like JDG has the golden road the meta hasn't changed at all basically this team said no like we will <laughs> dictate the pace of the meta and as it evolves Caria was there every step of the way kind of being a pioneer. So when even other teams kind of took a lot of the support and bot lane picks, it was T1 who were still dictating the pace and what was happening. And you saw they had really good answers and thought behind so many of their moves throughout every single series in this tournament. I think if you're looking at the tournament overall, Carrier might be my overall MVP. Okay, yeah. Zayas definitely deserves it here for finals. Him and owner at really big games. Baker, I said, popping off in the last one yeah. as well, especially. It's uh, so interesting because we were watching the JDG match as well, and it almost seemed like that was, it's a pre-final, of course, almost, but today, um, I don't want to say it, but we had them as huge favorites, and for Weibo, was it a collapse, or was it just the fact that T1 was that much stronger? How <laughs> that do you was just put it? Weibo. Yeah. That's yeah. just Weibo to the T. I mean, this team can, on the day, look like the best team in the world, but it uh, can oftentimes fall apart because you do have players that are so coin flippy, like the shy Shehu not stepping up. And even when we look towards, you know, how a lot of these fights were going, a lot of them were progressing on that knife's edge and Weibo very quickly turned it into themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, for T1 also, we, we've said it before, but now we, we often say the LPL is like the most gruesome qualifying bracket for Worlds. Well, T1 ran through all of them to make it to this title, which is so impressive, especially when you look at the history between these two regions and the fact that T1 wasn't necessarily the team you would have chosen out of the LCK to make this run. Yeah, I think a lot of people were highlighting Gen G as like on the opposite side of the bracket um, as the other LCK team or the, the LCK team that might make the most noise at this tournament. Um, I think it's also for T1, like specifically, and again, this roster, like I loved hearing from <laughs> Zayas being like, oh wow, someone talking That's awesome. Me. Uh, I loved hearing from Zayas being like, last year I saw Kingen across from me get this MVP award, right? And it like tore me up. Yeah. <laughs> and so now to see him step on stage, I also would shout out owner throughout this tournament. Again, I think, I cannot stress enough what a amazing performance he has had throughout Worlds, com especially compared to his summer. And to ha have that happen, to be that player for his team is amazing. And I think it's been incredible to see that, like, we had the T1, obviously, from spring that was incredibly strong. And we did see that shift back in towards this meta. But, like, every single time T1 took to the stage, they were massively prepared for their opponents. I mean, you can see it up against JDG, where they were forcing these, like, picks we're missing, has to go into the Alistair, into these terrible matchups, so that then they're prepared. They come into today, and Faker's able to bring out the Akali and have an insane performance, because they're ready for what Shehu wants to play. There is so much work that has gone into this, let alone the fact that every single part of them has been incredible. And T1 really <laughs> did silence them here today. I love it.
but he's like, yeah. I'm gonna do it, and then immediately a little smile, like, oh, I'm a good guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> and when we talk about the LPL, I think one of the things that I know you and I have both stressed, Rob, is how different all of these LPL teams are, right? In terms of playstyle, in terms of how they see the game. So to see T1 go through every single one of them, have good <laughs> game plans, <Sorry>. having prepared <laughs> the squeal for, for every single one of them, and have to go through different playstyles, and also to have T1 be this team that's like, we are going to play so aggressively. We are going to smash you early, which I think people initially, at least whenever I would talk about this team, had trouble wrapping their heads around because they had old, slow T1 still in their minds. And that team was never oh, like that. The hard synergy is not a point, uh, sorry. And then <laughs> to see them go through all of these teams with different play styles from the LPL. No one can contest how good this team is. I just see that Faker especially deserves that shush to the, to yeah. the audience. You know, everybody had started to doubt <laughs> that he would be able to do it again. Pe people were like, okay, people Faker, is he ever going to be able to get back to it? And he worked his way all the way back here to, to make it so complete now with a fourth World Championship on top of it. It is crazy. There's no one who can ever catch him. No. At this stage, I mean, a 10 year long career with a 40% win rate in World Championships is kind of nuts. Like that's not in its own sake. It's just yeah, people mind boggling. Were, people were still like, okay, yeah, he's the GOAT, but the GOAT is getting old, you know, he, he, maybe he doesn't have yeah. the hands anymore. He had the hands. Yo, the <laughs> Holly game. He yeah. was magnificent. It was crazy. It's so cool to see. And um, as we've discussed also before, it's, yes, it's those purely the numbers. Absolutely, but it's also his influence on this esports. I would even wager he's one of the reasons why this esport and this sport is so incredibly big. Oh yeah, yeah. He is, he's definitely he is League of Legends. He yeah. is competitive League of Legends. I have to say as well, for the just for the T1 team, like there is also no way that this is ever going to not be Korea's favorite team yeah. ever. Yeah. After being the only hope in the tournament and having all the pressure on think, them. Do you think they're still gonna go their separate ways? They can't now. Oh my god. Come if on. this if the team uh, breaks up still, it's gonna uh, be such a heartbreak. I have some disappointing news for you guys. I think <laughs> yeah. they still might. I mean either way, we'll see. I think it's still an incredible moment for T1 and for Faker. I like 10 years ago, the LPL got their first ever finals at the World Championship stage against Faker and against SKT, and they couldn't overcome them. And 10 years later, it's still the same final boss oh. that they can't overcome. And it's incredible to see that T1 have been able to keep what has been such a world-class level for such a long period of time. And finally, <laughs> to have the other four members on this team picked up more than a well-deserved win and more than a well-deserved title is such a momentous moment, not only for like this team, but also, as you say, for the eSport as a whole. It's crazy. Um, hey, Kobe, you tweeted it, but what skins do you think we're looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the Jay's top for Zeus. Yeah. You know the story around his name uh, and his mom suggesting it to him because it does sound oh, like, like his Korean okay. name. And the God of Lightning is so intertwined with some of his favorite yeah. champions with the Jace, with the Kennen and stuff. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's my that would be my vote. When, when, I, when I return and I get yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know maybe something like that for him, you know, for for owner the Lee Sin, he, he got to pull it out in the oh, finals yeah. a bunch. It has been magnificent for him. Every jungler also loves Lee Sin's, and that sells really well. So <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. Faker's always talked about the Ari. Yeah. So maybe he can finally get his Ari skin. Oh, right. the, bottom yeah. lane, the bottom lane, the bottom is a little more difficult because they're so versatile. Yes. Uh, like I would love a, a Guma Varus because I thought he had those crazy plays, but he, he has also, you know, wanted the Draven. So maybe he goes. The, Draven is pretty cool. Maybe he goes though. the Draven route. Yeah. Carrier could get an AD carry too. <laughs> yeah. Or Bard or. Yeah, no, or yeah no, I want no, a petition. Need a support. Yeah, I want a petition Carrier to do the Tom Kench because Carrier, mm. Carrier's Tom Kench. I just love it. It's so aggressive. Uh. Like. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Great. Oh, really exciting. Another side quest, something we can talk about a lot. Um, we do have a little bit of time uh, to kind of talk about this win as we're setting up for our own interview, I believe, with Faker and Laura and Jason. But as you can imagine, a lot of people want to talk to him. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. Totally yeah. Probably everyone. Um, so let's talk a little bit also about. Um, we can talk about the future because we don't know what lays in the future. I would just say to agree with everyone else that it would be incredibly sad if it doesn't go on because I feel like you've worked on this for two years and the task couldn't be more difficult because you start this project where 
anything but a world's victory or and an MSI victory and all the LCK titles and hopefully any other title that you can grab is the absolute minimum of what you can get. And it's now worked out, right? So surely they deserve, from a fan perspective, from us, we want to see them play more, right? Uh, deserve, I mean, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, the other thing is this roster, when we were looking at when they might have won their first world's title and like the initial iteration in 2021 i'll exclude but 2022 last year mm -hmm. they were still so young like it was basically yeah. you know like faker and the zoomers right yeah, so I remember uh, that. so i think for this lineup what i'm not looking for is to see like oh are they going to stick together but it's kind of a miracle that they've stuck together for this long considering how much League of Legends rosters change. Yeah. And now I think the discussion honestly is, finally we return to, is this the best roster we've seen over the past two years yes. now that they finally have yes. their world's title? A hundred percent. I will say though, if I'm the LPL, I'm going to be pissed if I go, don't get a chance to run this back next year. Yeah, like, you, I need, chance you need to take them down. JDG got two it. chances at two worlds in that a row. Fair. Do they need yeah. a third? Dog, dog? Come on. <laughs> third time's the charm. Third time's the charm. I like it. Uh. I mean, Azale was talking about it too, but already the most international games together of any team. To have the capstone now of actually a world title to put on top of it, while it would be really tragic for them to break up, it also kind of feels like the perfect storybook ending That's to true. all of their hard work. The grind and the glory. They, 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 the writer set this in motion. <laughs> yes. All of the grind has paid off in the glory of this year. You can't do any better than this. Uh, not in league, I think. Um, you know, um, across esports, one of the most hardest titles to get, and they did it with flair. As we take a look at some of the moments from the last game, ah, actually the last series in particular. Uh, the Yone, of course, kicking everything off from this, saying, "I can do it on the Yone too." And uh, yeah, it started the way it ended. Yeah, the skirmishing from T1 was absolutely insane. It felt like every single time they are going in, they're just dismantling Weibo every ah. single time. And yeah, this one Whoop. is nasty to see. Shahu tries desperately to get anything rolling for them, but T1, they always have their number. That bottom lane synergy, Guma and Karia both like, <laughs> nope, dodging yeah. both of them to the side. Then he flashes the Kalista ult too. And the re-engage, oh my goodness. It was perfect. Uh, in the same vein that we've talked about, yeah, go ahead. Faker Zonia's there yeah. on the Azir ult sick. and the so Kennen ult. Clutch. He's, uh, he immunes two ultimates, and then he sticks in here in the middle of four people <laughs> in his shroud <laughs> to kill Xiaohu, flashes yeah, out, like, hits his E, and goes, goes back, back from I'm the not, I'm not trying to take away from Faker here, but I feel like he had a little help from Chris. <laughs> That's always the case. <laughs> Uh, here's a post-game breakdown for that last one as well. Um, so in the same vein where we've talked about T1 kind of, and this was really their chance, for the side of Weibo, when you're a Xiaohu who has been trying to get this for so long, for the Shy getting back to the World Finals, the same for, for Crisp. I'm not saying the story is the same for all of them, but we have to take into account They've definitely proved that they deserve to be in the final, very much so. But it's going to be very, very difficult to get there again, I think, uh, when you look across of uh, that lineup. Yeah, I think 100%. I sorry, I zoned out for a second. I was thinking about something else. So I have no <laughs> idea what the question was. What are you thinking was. about? But he with you Hopefully not. What are you thinking about? Oh, yeah. Addy, look, I think for for Weibo, I think it's a long, it's a long, long road to try and get back into this position. Yeah. I think, as you say, it's this is a squad that has incredible talent, but it's also one that's taken a long time to try and get together and try to work together. True. Mm -hmm. When I look towards the shy, look, this is as you get what you give, it's kind of a bit back and forth with him, but <laughs> I think this is definitely a roster that has grown together over time and kind of understood how they need to work together. Even the Shine interview saying, hey, look, this is now a team that I do trust in and a team that I can't believe in, so maybe he we get the Orn. run back, but he we have like, no idea. I only, I only will play Orn <laughs> when I trust all my teammates to carry, and he played Orn. He That's the truest side. to trust his <laughs> the teammates to carry of trust. in that game. Uh, I think... The big thing for me with this Weibo roster, first of all, I never expected them to make a World's Finals based yeah. on their performance. Or Worlds. <laughs> I, I didn't even expect them exactly to make it here. I think when you look at what Weibo and then previously Suning has kind of done with their lineup, they've shuffled pieces around until they found something that works. So I am really curious to see what's next for a lot of these players, especially like I do want to highlight Weiwei, right? Because yeah. I do still think he was very much their most consistent performer throughout this tournament. Obviously, like certain other players had highs, but then they also had 
some pretty low lows mm -hmm. if we're looking at someone like the Shy or even Crisp, who I did appreciate how he adapted to the meta, but I also thought he looked really, really rough at times, including today in this series. Um, so yeah, I do, I do want to shout out Weiwei for being someone who did come in uh, when the team felt like they needed to put in someone else over Karsa. Um, that was kind of a, a, still a controversial decision despite the criticism that Karsa was receiving. And I do think he had big shoes to fill there. And he was their most consistent performer here in this tournament. And I think for a guy who kind of missed out on his chance to go to Worlds with V5, like uh, he came from Suning, trained under yep. SOFM, but he never really got that opportunity to really shine at international stage. And so many people in 2021 were like, V5 are going to Worlds. This is going to be the uh. moment. Weiwei's going to pop. Off. Oh. He's gonna get his t chance to be in the limelight, yeah. and unfortunately, that never really came to being when they just barely missed out on it. And it felt heartbreaking for a lot of those old V5 fans to look away and go, "Now we're gonna see him on the bench. Not gonna really get to see him continue his journey, but to get that second chance at life and then run it right the way up and have such an incredible well, world's performance in general is amazing for this player." Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, um, yeah, do you want to look back at some general world's highlights? The ref. Yeah. Let the good times roll. Ooh. We don't have the. We don't have a video, actually. Oh. You you can look back on some of your favorite moments. Ah, Energy was good. And, oh my god. Energy was definitely good. Very very proud of that team. Um, honestly, it sounds so weird now, right? But yes, absolutely. There there were so Seems many. So long ago. I, I really enjoyed the format as well. The Swiss stage I felt added added a lot to this tournament. Uh, and getting to see that stage progressively mature into uh, the bracket stage that we finally got, and uh, and the draws, <laughs> which just reminds me of the real main character, the ref. <laughs> the ref drawing all the teams uh, at the very beginning stages. A really good one. It's yeah. been a great world. So it's ha it has been really fun to watch. Um, overall, I've seen that a lot of people have been watching for sure. It's been really exciting. Set records. Set records, uh, and it helps, of course, to have T1. They are such a popular team but to cap it off like this it's just absolutely beautiful I definitely hope well it's been announced you know we're gonna go to London for the world finals next year that is really awesome um, hoping that the European teams make it a bit farther because <laughs> yeah. like that would be nice um, well you're gonna have kind of like two G2s now right are they reconstructing old G2 uh, well, there Yankos is like and, you make it sound and like wonder. you make it sound like they're going to a lab, yeah. you know, and they're like sewing the players here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what's been my favorite memories. I mean, being back in Korea is it's always amazing. As said, it's like where esports is so incredibly alive and has been for so long, long before league even, right? And you, f we felt that at every stop. I mean, I'm never going to forget that T1 JDG match in Busan and the sheer emotion of that arena. And I mean, the sheer emotion from Caster Judd as well. That's yeah. a moment that will always stand with me. Um, I think there's a lot of people who'd be like, oh, you know, you know, casters can't be biased, they can't be whatever, but like you actually get to see how much casters care about it. Yeah. And Caster Judd kind of embodied that for me to actually see how much raw emotion this guy had. And to just give everything to your scene and everything to your league and finally, to, to just see that bubble over and how happy he was. I can only imagine. I'm sad we don't have a camera on him. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. I would love to see what he's like right now. Maybe he had no tears left after last week. Where is right. he? I think they're, they're over there. there usually. They're, they're, on that side. they're on that Let's side. Let's go find them. <laughs> Emily? Uh, I mean, for me, obviously, I'd never been on a desk where I was actually a fan of the team. <laughs> was KT the third best team here? <laughs> Maybe? Huh? Huh? It's yeah. definitely not. Sure. Game. It's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm used to the heartbreak. But what, it was what do you mean? LCS were here too. I, I. <laughs> I'm a KT fan. <laughs> uh, it is intrinsic to my... Interesting. Okay. <laughs> the reason I am here is because I started following KT in, in yeah. 2013. But yeah. Then we're very um, thankful for KT so yeah. that you're here on our desk. We really are. <laughs> um, but I don't know what to say to that. Uh, but I I thought that was like, even though I watched them lose, obviously, to JDG, um, that was a really special moment because I'd never been able to be on a desk where I was such an actual huge fan of the team and had that kind of emotional investment that wasn't just general, like, I mean, I mean I'm emotionally invested in too many things in League of Legends, honestly. It's yeah. probably And in bad. life, me too. It's, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's troublesome. Ugh, emotions, <laughs> gross. Uh, but no, that was, that was great, even though KT lost. Yeah.
That's crazy to me because Energy played G2 right bef before that and, yeah. they, and they won. They won. And so. There was nothing there? I was out here in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to call, I think, oh, one second. Yes, I'd like to call the talent that is still here in the arena up. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. Um, there's also more hey. people. Hey. Yay. Uh, we have <laughs> Raz over he there does. too, but he's still doing something, so he can't. He's so, too uh, cool for us. He's yeah. too popular for All us of now. our mics are open he's and they might hear star. you guys as well. But uh, yeah, thank you. All of you uh, at home for watching. It's been an amazing <laughs> world championship and it's been an amazing crowning achievement for T1, an incredible fourth title for them, the greatest team league has ever seen. Faker, the greatest player league has ever seen and will see, but it's time for us to get some rest. We want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We want to recharge for the 2024 season because we've truly given our all, um, us here on the desk, but all the people you can see in production that make sure that we can stand here every day and make this show for you, and we couldn't <laughs> do it without you. We love you so, so much. Thank you, you so much for watching this entire year. Awesome. Yes, you, yes, you right there. You right there. They're like, don't drag us on camera. We got to give the Faker thumbs up. Yeah, we're going to give the Faker thumbs up. Here. Goodbye. <laughs> Out. It's been 3,695 days since Faker first stepped onto a world's final stage and won his first title. T1 have dismantled all hopes and dreams of the LPL. All of them, but one. Faker has to get out of there though. Can't be a snare for the hostile takeover. Gets so much work done. The devour's in, but the kill's there. Nature's grasp comes in. He gets pulled back. He's interrupted from the ultimate. Zayas does get a knock up there and a shield, but I think he's still dead. And there it is. The answering kill from the shy. Bit of damage as Q comes down. There's the ulti. Nature's grasp, but look at the knockups. The kickback. Wei Wei punches him out of the middle. Oh! The dawning shadow flies through to help get the kill onto Zayas. He's there at all as Crisp is under the turret. They throw to the yes. Herald, but Zayas has found two with the ultimate life. Goes down so low, but isn't going to survive. Think he's going to be excited about ganking the Shy anytime soon. Although Zayas is just going to kill oh! him. That is just not fair. The Infernal Chains come in. He's lit on fire. He's feared. Akuma Yushi catches in. Faker dashes over the wall. Remember, they don't have a turret here. The charm is going to split them. Carrier tries to get a oh. double hit. He goes forward and then just explodes. And then Ona thinks that that's his moment. It's a double again for this Nocturne. And he survives. Xiaohu now taking a whole lot of damage. And Faker is in the shroud. He's toying with them. It's a double kill. As he what? Flips Order! And back in again. It's a triple for Faker. Four times. T1 has lost in a game five. Four times they've been knocked out. And four times they have got back up for this moment. It was seven years since their last. A decade since their first. The SKT legacy has been reignited. T1 will be your 2023 world champions. What's your play, guys?